Okay, hi everyone. This is going to be another optional video where I'm going to talk about how to use conditionals. In this video, I'm just going to solve some conditional problems for you. I'm going to look some up online. I haven't seen them before. Um, and I'll just talk through how I use conditionals to solve these conditional problems. My goal with this video is to have you maybe pause the video and before I start coding a problem, you give it a try yourself. And then you unpause and see if the way that you approach the problem matches the way I approach the problem. Or if you get stuck, just watch how I solve it. See if you can pick up on these concepts that I'm using from lecture. I won't be teaching any new concepts. Certainly I know important new concepts, maybe small things, but I will be pointing out existing concepts and just helping strengthen them in your minds. I have our replit pulled up here, and let's make sure that everything's working. So I have it print, hello, Howard. And over here, I'm going to try to do python3 main.py, which prints hello, Howard. So everything's working. Now, I've already Googled. This is one of the websites that I pulled up. Uh, all I searched for was conditional practice problems Python. And I clicked on a couple of links until I saw this problem. So this is the problem I'm thinking that we should try to solve together right now. So let's take a um, silly problem like this one. I'm going to put it in comments here. Um, one handy thing you can do is if you highlight a bunch of lines and you hit command slash on your keyboard, it'll comment the entire thing for you. So we need to write an if statement that asks for the user's name via the input function. If the name is bond, make it print welcome on board, W07. Otherwise, make it print good morning name. So this problem statement's a little confusing, but pause the video and see if you can implement this yourself. And in a few seconds here, I'll continue on with the solution. Welcome back. Hopefully you try that yourself. The reason I say that this description is a little confusing is because you can't write an if statement that asks for a name. That's not what if statements do. If statements are conditions, uh, conditionals, and if statements just check a condition and conditionally execute some body of code. So what they really mean here is first ask for the user's name. So name equals input. Um, what is your name? And then we're going to want to uh, do something. If the name is bond, do something else. Do something. Otherwise, do something else. So let's write the conditions first. So if the name is bond, the way we compare a string to another string, or in general compare any two items in, uh, in Python, is with equals equals. So name equals equals bond. We'll do something here. And then otherwise, this is a good place for us to use else. So if name doesn't equal bond, we're going to do something else. You've seen these past statements come up in class and in other videos. As a reminder, a past statement doesn't do anything. It's a kind of a placeholder. Because Python expects there to be at least one line after uh, you know, any set of, sort of colon. That means there's a body to come. And Python gets really confused if it's an empty body. So we have to have at least one line. Pass does nothing. Usually we'll use it in skeleton code to mean that you should replace it with some of your own code. There's no actual reason to use pass. So what do we do if the word is the name is bond? If the name is bond, print out welcome on board 007. Oops. So let's do that. I'll copy and paste that string and we're going to print welcome on board 007. Otherwise, have the program print good morning name. person's name here is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this person's name, um, we need to add in like this, common name. So remember, this will add this string name um, and add a space between them. Let's run our code and see what happens. Apply, what is your name? My name is Alex. It says, good morning, good morning, Alex. But if you put in the secret name, my name is Bond, then it says, welcome on board 007. 
Now I notice that exercise 7b here says do the same thing, but make sure if the name is bond with lowercase b, it still prints welcome on board 007. So that means we have really two conditions. We have the name could be capital bond, or the name could be lowercase bond. So now if name is uppercase bond or name is lowercase bond, we execute the body of this if statement. And we can tell what the body is because it's indented here. All of the lines indented after um, a conditional, like if or else, uh, all of those lines are part of the, the body until the next time the code gets dedented, like this, else. So if we run this code, we should see that this works. Um, so Alex again, still good morning, Alex. But if I do bond or lowercase bond, they both say welcome on board 007. There's a cleaner way of doing this that I'm going to show you now. Because what if you want this code to work for any kind of combination, whether it's uppercase or lowercase? You know, what if the what if the instruction said, what if the person entered bond? It should still say kind of, you know, it would make sense for this to say welcome on board 007. Or what about like bond like that? The way that we do that is we have this uh, string dot lower function. And this returns a copy of the string converted to lowercase. And so whenever you have a string kind of in a variable, or even a string just on its own, like if I do hello dot lower, string literal dot lower, this will give us back hello in all lowercase letters. So that way we can just compare name dot lower to bond. And that way, if I run our code, so if it's all caps, it says welcome on board 007. If it's any kind of strange combination, it still says welcome on board 007, 007. Whereas if I put Alex, it'll print good morning, Alex. Um, let's see. Let's look at some other practice problems here. Um, conditionals. A lot of these problems use also loops or uh, functions, so it gets a little tricky. You know what, why don't we do... Um, let's keep looking, let's keep looking. Hmm. Let's show practice problems. Let's see if I can come up with a problem myself here for us to solve. Okay, I've got another practice problem for us. So we're going to do absolute value. So take, we're going to take input from the user, number from the user, and print out its absolute value. So if we're taking input from the user, we do uh, num equals input a number. Now here's a question for you. Input is a function that returns a string. We need to cast it to something. Should we cast to an integer or to a float? Well, really the answer is, you should do whatever the problem says to do. But the problem just says number, so it's hard to tell if they mean integer or float. In this case, uh, both you know, floats and integers can be absolute valued, right? The absolute value of 4.5 is 4.5. The absolute value of negative you know, negative 7.5 is 7.5. So we should probably allow the user to enter something with a decimal point if they want to. They don't have to, but they can. So what we're going to do is 
now we have two conditions. If the number is positive, we just print out that number. If it's not positive, we print out the negative of that number. So let's see what happens here. We have our two conditions. So if, if the number is greater than zero, print out our number. Now, if the number is not greater than zero, this is where we use an else. We print out the negative of that number. So here, if we run our code, see, I'm gonna enter the number 10 and 10 gets printed. And then we go here and print the number negative five and five still gets printed. So that's great. One thing is, what if we print put zero? Ooh, so we print negative zero. So that's kind of strange. How about we make the zero be handled by the case where we don't add a negative? Think, how would you do that? If you want the code in line eight to run, if the number is zero, what would you do? Well, one thing you could do is you could add another condition. So if the number is greater than zero or the number is equal to zero, we wanna just print the number. If we run our code here, we'll see that that works. Zero does get printed, but there's a cleaner way of writing this. So greater than zero or equal to zero, should sound familiar, greater than or equal to, there's a special operator for that, which is greater than or equal to. So num greater than or equal to zero. We're running our code here. Oops, I don't wanna do that. Uh, three main.py, entering zero, we'll now still print a zero and we have a nice looking condition here. So that's a couple of problems, uh, how to use conditionals. Um, hopefully there will be some more soon for the next topics that we're covering, which are functions.